Americans are capable of achieving extraordinary things when they have the freedom and opportunity to do so. This is American Potential, and here's your host, Jeff Crank. Well, thanks for joining us for another edition of American Potential. You know, we talk so often about the indoctrination of kids these days and what's happening in our schools. Are they getting the kind of education that that we got, uh, that their parents received? And I, I think more and more the answer is no. But how do we preserve this great society that we've built, the capital, the system of capitalism, so many other things when they're being indoctrinated sometimes in schools to believe differently. Now, how many of you have read The Law by Frederick Bastiat or The Road to Serfdom by F.A. Hayek or The Creature from Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin? What if I told you there are kids as young as five that are learning about these books? Well, one author has taken these books as well as others and turn them into educational tools for parents to share the principles of a free society. Children are learning about what causes inflation, why the free market is important, as well as what the golden rule means. While some parents are reading these books to their kids, they're learning these principles as well. It's never too late to get an education because it was something that they weren't taught when they were children. Now, this book series is so popular that there's a group that reads them during Children's Story Hour. Today's guest is Connor Boyack, and he is the author of the Tuttle Twins book series, as well as the founder and president of the Libertas Institute, which is a key partner of Americans for Prosperity. Thank you so much for joining us, Connor. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Yeah. So, you know, this is such a unique uh, concept. And uh, as as parents find around the country that they don't like some of the things that that are being taught to their children, they're turning to the Tuttle Twins and and, and other uh, uh, forms of uh, educational material to help, you know, help them teach their children some of these very, very important, uh, you know, facts about our system, about, uh, you know, economic laws and things like that. Where did the idea for the Tuttle Twins series come from? Well, I run a, a nonprofit think tank, Libertas Institute, where we do a lot of legal reform. We work with AFP uh, in our home state of Utah and other states as well. And my this is back in 2013. My son at the time, he was almost turning six. And I would come home for work, and as any dad does, I would say, tell me what you did today. And he would answer with his typical, you know, five-year-old level answers. But he would start to ask me, Dad, where were you? What did you do? And I didn't want to just tell him, like, I typed on a computer all day, or I made phone calls. (laughs) I wanted to convey to him the substance of what his dad did, why liberty is so important to me and and what it actually means. So I did what anyone in my shoes would do. I went to Amazon and I was like, you know, free market (laughs) books for kids. And I was trying to find things that would teach kind of these libertarian free market philosophy came up short. There was nothing. I was talking with a buddy of mine uh, who's a dad as well, big liberty lover. And we were kicking around this idea of a children's book. And we said, you know, let's just give this a go. Let's, let's have a fun little side project, have some fun with it. Maybe nothing, you know, we won't sell any books. But uh, we'll have some fun along the way. Well, a lot of people bought it. And then they said, when's the next one coming out? And uh, and so it turned quickly into a series of books because there were so many parents out there like me who wanted to talk to their kids about these concepts, but they struggled to know how to do so. And they went looking like I did on Amazon for resources that would help them have these conversations. And fortunately for them, they found that resource in the Tuttle Twins and where I and my team, we had to make it because it didn't exist at the time. So if someone's listening to this podcast or they're watching it on YouTube and they've never heard of the Tuttle Twins, describe it. So our books teach uh, kids the ideas of a free society, uh, things that you would expect they would learn in school. But not only are they not learning these ideas, they're learning quite opposite ideas today. We're talking about things like free markets, natural rights, personal freedom, property rights, the golden rule, entrepreneurship, sound money, true education, the dangers of socialism, the importance of voluntary uh, decisions and persuasion over force. So basically the, the whole foundational ideas 
because of how society is built. And what's fascinating is many parents who are religious, let's say Christian, they they understand the need to take their kids to say Bible study or Sunday school, and they have little cartoon versions of the Bible and things like this. Most parents want to teach their religious values to their kids, and there are a number of means uh, and resources to help them do so. However, these parents who also believe that there are certain political and economic and civic truths, they, they historically have not with the same religious fervor, transmitted their their you know economic and, and political understanding and values to their kids. And so these kids grow up being exposed from social media and peers and all kinds of stuff to other nonsense. And the parents get shocked. They're like, how does, you know, why is my kid a social justice warrior now? And how, how did they, uh, you know, show up at this uh, fight for 15 rally when I, you know, in our family, we've always been free market conservatives. My answer is you didn't talk to them. You didn't have these discussions. Right. You didn't teach them. You didn't share your values from a young age and compete for the hearts and minds of your own children against all the many forces that are trying to, to capture their loyalty. So the whole point for us with Tuttle Twins is let's give parents books, curriculum, cartoon, a podcast, many resources to spark a lot of discussions that they can have as a family so that they can talk about current events and real world issues and understand like why is inflation happening? What's actually causing it? You ask any kid reading a Tuttle Twins book and they can cut through all the nonsense all the BS that we hear from Congress and the media about what's really happening, inflation, and the kids will say it's the Federal Reserve. They're printing too much money. <laughs> and the, where did you right. learn that? Oh, in a Tuttle Twins book. So that, that's what we're after is really kind of sparking a lot of awareness, understanding, and discussion about what's happening in our world today. And these books are illustrated. They're, I mean, th- that's the whole key to this is to, to have it be entertaining enough to hold the attention of a, of, a, of a kid, but yet still teach them these valuable principles, right? That's right. Yeah. It, the illustrations that Elijah does are key to what we're doing. And I would say the second component is storytelling. Uh, for example, we have two uh, American history, I don't want to call them textbooks, but they're beefy. They're 250 pages. They're big hardback books, but they're story based because I hated history in school. I hated memorizing all the names and dates and figures and who wrote which letter to who for which convention on which date. And and I was the kid who would raise my hand and say, why do we need to learn this and put your hand down? It'll be on the test. Right. And so I would regurgitate this stuff. But I hated history until later in life. I was reading some biographies and I was like, oh, I actually find this interesting. And as I reflected on why I realized these are just stories. They're fascinating stories and I'm learning history, but it's through storytelling. So our, our beefy, you know, American history books that we're doing, they're all just stories. And that is the magic that our Tuttle Twins books more broadly. We've got books from toddlers all the way through teens, but all of them focus on storytelling so that kids can get introduced to these ideas. But it's not like we're sitting them down and saying, okay, here are the six steps to entrepreneurship and here's how to do a business plan. And you know, that's boring to kids. They love yeah. stories. We all love stories stories. And so that's the method that we've used in our books to convey these ideas to the rising generation. Well, and I'll tell you, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating idea that you came up with and, and you've been very successful. How, how many books have, are, are out there? How Over many total 5 million sold now. So it's been, wow. uh, yeah, it's been pretty significant. 12 languages. Uh, we've got a cartoon that's been seen, I think like 15 plus million views now. So it's, uh, it's spreading, which is awesome. Yeah, that's great. And by the way, I, and I told you this in the in the kind of the pre-interview before we started a little bit, the cutest video ever of of uh, your your kids actually on there and they kind of became celebrities. It sounds like tell the story about your son kind of figuring out, well, what are royalties, dad? I love that story. So on, <laughs> on, on our website on TuttleTwins.com, we we have this video that we've featured for a long time. Uh, that I recorded a number of years ago with my kids. Uh, my kids, I involved them as little, you know, actors in our commercials and, and marketing videos. And I would pay them, you know, 10 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever, just to memorize some lines and look cute and, and make a pitch, you know, in the video of why, <laughs> hey, you need the Tuttle Twins books. And and this one video garnered millions of views across social media. And we were at uh, Lake Tahoe as a family on vacation. And I, my wife asked about it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we sold X number of, of books as a result. And 
And she says, you know, oh, uh, too bad the kids didn't get a royalty. And, and so my son, who's, I think, at the time, eight, maybe nine, he's like, Dad, what's a royalty? <laughs> and so I proceeded not only to teach him, but I was like, this is also a lesson in contract negotiation and leverage. Because, you know, at the time, you couldn't really demand much more than 20 bucks. But now if I ask you to do another video, you should come back and say, Dad, you know, it's going to cost a little more because, uh, you know, I've got a following now. A lot of people have seen my video. And if you want me to do another one. So, uh, so we had fun with it. The kids have been awesome. They've even helped. Like we have our own warehouse with dozens of teenagers who just pack Tuttle Twins books all day to ship all the books out uh, for the orders that we get. And so my kids have been a part of that, just packing books. It's it's kind of a family affair, both for myself and our illustrator Elijah. Uh, just uh, getting a lot of involvement in this because it's such a passion project for us. I, I believe Jeff that. You know, despite our efforts and our organizations trying to pursue legal reform and, and fight for freedom like that, I don't believe we're going to save our country at the Capitol. And I don't believe we're going to save our country in the courtroom. I think if our country is to be saved, it's at the dinner table. It's parents and kids coming together, having discussions, fostering critical thinking, skepticism about all the BS we're being told, community service, strengthening social fabric, you know, growing together as a family and as a community. That's how I think we save our country. And, and that's why I'm so passionate about what we're doing with the Tuttle Twins, because I see it as a not just a Band-Aid like a lot of our legal reforms are. It's like, oh, let's fix this and tweak that here. Henry J David Thoreau has this quote where he says, for every thousand hacking at the branches of evil, there's one striking at the root. And so for me, how we educate the rising generation, that is a root issue that has so many downstream effects. And so it's just such a privilege and an honor to be a, a part of a solution that's going to pay generational dividends if we do it right. Well, yeah, and so true and so well put. And I think, you know, at the, at the very core, you're changing people's lives, right? This is, I mean, I think you're also helping save the country by by doing these books and helping people from a very early age understand these principles. But also on an individual level, it's going to change their lives. Uh, they're, they're not going to sit around waiting for the government to provide them something. They're going to go out and be an entrepreneur. What about that aspect of it, the individual aspect of this, too? Well, what you point out is something I'm very passionate about. It's one thing to read ideas and concepts and, and philosophies or whatever in a book. It's another thing to apply them and enrich your life and enrich your community. One of the projects uh, that we've operated for a few years is called a children's entrepreneur market and you can think of these like a farmer's market but it's run entirely by the kids mom or dad can help set up and take mm. down but the kids run the whole show and after doing this for a few years in our home state we decided that we're going to take it national so this year we're in six states uh, Tennessee Texas Pennsylvania Michigan Arizona and Colorado and next year, we're going to add 10 more states. So within a few years, it'll be a fully national program. And the idea is, hey, kids, you've been reading these ideas. You've been learning about entrepreneurship and money and all types of uh, things like this. Let's actually go experience this. Let's apply it. Let's have these family activities. And I'll tell you, doing this for a number of years now, it is such a great way to draw uh, entrepreneurship is a great way to draw in families because not everyone is attracted to our political views or our legal reforms or our white papers or whatever we do. But when you say, hey, you know, would your kids like to have this experience of like a lemonade stand on steroids? You know, 90 percent of parents are like, yes, I want that for my kids. And so it's this very politically agnostic, family friendly, inviting way to draw people in so that uh, their kids can benefit. They can all learn and they can deepen their their familiar familiarity with not only just general business principles and ideas but free market philosophy we give them Tuttle Twins books and other things to connect them on their way so for those interested in that the website it's a mouthful it's children's entrepreneur market.com uh, or on social media and that's something we're, we're taking nationally uh, we'd love to you know connect with AFP groups and think tanks and others who are working in their community to dr bring a lot of families out because I think it's such a great way to grow our movement by having this very family friendly uh, top of funnel strategy to draw people in so that we can then talk to them about our, our deeper beliefs and the projects that we're working on well and as I said this is changing this is changing lives, individual people's lives. I mean, you'll never know really uh, who all those people are uh, that you change their lives. But, uh, you know, if somebody's going to school and they're learning that the that the government's there to 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 
you know, plow the ground for them and everything will be fine. And, uh, you know, they learn differently somewhere else and they go out and become an entrepreneur. They change their lives and then the lives of countless other people, maybe who are their employees or, or, or whatever it is they do with their business. That is changing lives. And uh, it's just such a great thing that, that you're doing and, and probably something that when you started this, maybe you didn't anticipate all of that kind of uh, outreach as well. Not at all. Uh, we, no one was doing this at the time. Again, I, I couldn't right. find any books. There have since been others like, you know, Brave Books or Heroes of Liberty and a few others that have gotten into the children's book uh, space from a right of center perspective. Obviously, the left has been, you know, putting out garbage for kids for a long time. But right. we were the first. We were kind of the pioneers. In fact, CNN a couple years ago uh, published this article uh, accusing us of creating what they called a right-wing children's education complex and uh, that we had kind of kick-started this effort from conservatives who were skeptical about what kids are learning in school and they were kind of like you know downplaying from our perspective why we were doing this and i'm reading this article and and i'm smiling the whole time i you know they're attacking what we're doing but i i recognized this as a marketing gift i i took the article <laughs> i emailed it to our list of like a million people i plastered social media with it shouting from the rooftops hey guys cnn's coming after us check this out more than that i i set up a coupon code i said if you order it was over a weekend i said if you order this weekend and use the coupon cnn uh, you'll get 50% off of the books. <laughs> we sold over 100,000 books that weekend as a result of wow. CNN, to which I told everybody, hey, if anyone has any contacts at MSNBC, please send them my way as well. <laughs> so, you know, we had to we had to kind of create a category. No one was really doing sure. this at the time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just such uh, it's so exciting because I'll, I'll tell you, Libertas Institute, my think tank, we were branded as like this libertarian type of whatever group here in Utah where I'm based out of and some of the, the legal reforms and the criminal justice things or whatever that we would fight for would kind of get branded as, oh, it's the libertarian folks or it's these, you know, kooky conservatives or whatever. When we started doing the Tuttle Twins and the Children's Entrepreneur Market Projects, the brand perspective uh, totally shifted. Now the perception was, oh, yeah, you guys help kids. You help families. It was a very hmm. warm and inviting thing where it allowed us to build relationships and have discussions with people about our ideas. And so for all the freedom fighters out there, if you're volunteering or working for any of these organizations, I can't. Uh, strongly enough recommend having a family centric approach to what we're doing so that those families are talking about it at the dinner table so that they're uh, they have a positive uh, reception about our work. They start donating to your organizations or getting involved themselves. It was just just such a huge shift for us. And we started seeing entire families. You made the point at the beginning, Jeff, that so many of these parents didn't learn in school. Uh, the very ideas that we're teaching in the Tuttle Twins, over half of the parents getting our books say that they are learning new things for the first time wow. in these children's books. And because it's a very, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's not intimidating, uh, right? It's just, hey, read this book with your kids and you can have some fun. It's not like we're handing them, uh, you know, economics in one lesson by Henry Hazlitt <laughs> and saying, you know, here, you got to read this and learn. We right. just say, read with your kids, have a conversation. And the parents' barriers come down. Right. Their defenses are disengaged and they have a warm uh, interaction with their child. They're thankful to us for facilitating it. And they're being exposed as adults to the same ideas. So it's such a great way to really try and grow the tent, expand the movement so that we can draw in even more people to help us. Yeah. Well, th they're amazing, uh, amazing books. And I'm, gr I'm so happy for the success that you're CNN, I guess much of it goes to CNN for the, the thank you first to, to CNN. Um, now your daughter, I think your daughter said, I think she had a line in the video about these kids are cute, but yours are cuter. <laughs> <laughs> she, she had some great line uh, in there. And I want, at, before we end this episode, for sure, I want you to tell folks how they can one, see that video, but but learn more about how to, how to buy the books and go to your website and those sorts of things. Um, this is these are books that that parents a couple of things that I think are important and you alluded to this parents are learning from these books too they're learning things that they didn't get taught themselves in schools they're being um uh, uh you know their eyes are being opened to some of these ideas and that's a real benefit as well right 
It, it is, and and again, like I'll, I'll do a little thought experiment. Let's let's use that book I mentioned, Economics in One Lesson, a fantastic book written decades ago, back when English uh, often used multiple syllables rather than the dumbed down stuff that people are reading today. So it's a little bit more challenging for people to read. And imagine I'm on the side of the road, and let's say I stop a gentleman named Bob, and I say, Hey, Bob, I think it's important for you to learn about you know economics and why free markets are important. Here's a book. You should read it. Well, I think everyone would agree that the chances of Bob actually reading the book are probably below 1%, right? Because right. The, the barriers come up. Are you telling me I'm stupid? You know, I don't want to change. The, the human brain really wants to preserve energy and not have to expend energy on learning new things that it doesn't need to. So those defense mechanisms come up. And we find it consequently difficult as organizations, AFP, Libertas Institute, and many others, to change the hearts and minds of adults. And instead, let's say I approach Bob with a different book. I approach him with the Tuttle Twins and the Food Truck Fiasco. And this is our version of economics in one lesson. So we teach in our book many of the core concepts from Hazlitt's book. So now I approach Bob and I say, hey, Bob, do you have kids? Oh, yeah, I've got a, you know, eight year old and a 10 year old at home. Awesome. Uh, do you think it would be important for them to understand how markets work and what an economy is? And oh, yeah, yeah, that'd be really important. Are you confident that the schools are doing a, a good job teaching your kids uh, these ideas? Oh, no, you know, not at all. Great. Well, here's a, a 60 page, fully illustrated, fun kids book with a story that teaches them some of these ideas. Would you be interested? Oh, yeah. Can I have that? You know, I'll, can I pay for it? Can I buy it? For, you know, and it totally shifts things. And now Bob takes it home. He reads with his kids. He himself is learning some of these ideas, like the term protectionism, which we introduce in the story. Right. And, and his defenses, the walls have completely come down. And if anything, we've inverted it. Right. It, 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 now he's excited and he wants to do this. And, and so we've seen this across the years, across the country. So many parents who are politically agnostic, disinterested, disengaged, uh, who otherwise would not be receptive to the, the videos and the white papers and the policy briefs and all the things that the that the think tanks and uh, civic groups are doing. But instead, we're saying, hey, we want to help you help your kids. And that opens such an inviting door to reach uh, quite a number of people. This is why the schools often break down. They may teach something in, in school that's helpful or accurate or relevant. But then the kid comes home and mom says, hey, honey, what did you learn today? I don't know. And, and there's no retention at home. Mom and dad can't engage with the content. Siblings are unaware. And so what's taught in school is quickly in one ear and out the other. By contrast, when we are reaching and teaching families, we're creating a support structure of people who can operate from the same page. I'll give you a very brief example. Uh, I got an email recently from a dad. He had uh, read the Tuttle Twins and the Miraculous Pencil which is our version of uh, an essay called I Pencil by Leonard Reed, which teaches about free markets by using the object lesson of how pencils are made. So in our mm -hmm. book, the kids go on a field trip, they see how pencils are made, and they learn about a concept called spontaneous order. This idea that, uh, you know, no one, there's no president of pe uh, pencil production that dictates you know, to America, how many pencils are needed. This just happens spontaneously, and it's the order of the market. So this dad is walking down the grocery store, down the chip aisle, and he turns, and his, his nine-year-old daughter's no longer, you know, walking next to him. He looks back, and she's back at the potato chips. He walks back to her, honey, why did you stop? And her mouth, she's just, like, staring at these potato <laughs> chips, and she's like, dad, I get it. I understand spontaneous order. There's no president <laughs> in charge of potato chips, and yet we have wavy ones and curly ones. We've got sour cream and onion. We've got the bags. We've got Pringles, and there's nobody in charge, and yet we have all these things. And the dad was just beaming in the email of like, <laughs> oh my gosh, she made this real world connection, and like that yeah. is what it's all about. And now dad and, and daughter can continue to build upon that connection and have conversations. They could be driving in the car, hear something on the radio, and he can say, oh, honey, just like in the pencil uh, you know, book that you read, and then make yet another connection and application. That is the power of reaching families together so that we can have that, that built-in support system and network to not only better understand these ideas, but then actually to go and apply them too. Yeah, what a great, that's a great example. And, and uh, thank you for sharing that. You've got, uh, you know, schools, I think, used to teach some of these principles a while back, maybe a few generations ago, but they used to. But 
they just don't anymore. And I think that you're filling that that void left in the marketplace uh, there. And then also, I think like with homeschooling on the rise, you, uh, you offer so many different levels of learning at different age levels. Talk about talk about that and what you offer. So about half of our audience are homeschoolers. The other half are, you know, public, private, charter school. For the homeschoolers, they definitely, uh, you know, connect with us because of not only the books, but curriculum. We have American history curriculum. We have economic curriculum. So a lot of the homeschoolers like our materials because they can say, hey, this semester or whatever, we're going to learn about American history or we're going to learn about free market economics. So for the homeschoolers, it kind of makes sense. What's perhaps more interesting to me is the families who aren't homeschoolers who are still utilizing these materials. And as we've done a lot of surveys and talking to them over the years, the the best way I can summarize how they use our resources is as a counter agent. Like they know that their children are learning garbage in the schools or not being taught well enough. And so they say, hey, in the home, we're going to make sure we do this. Like, yeah, you're going to learn whatever you're going to learn at school. You're going to get exposed to those things. But together, whether it's in the evening or on a Saturday or a little summer school type of thing, we're going to use these Tuttle Twins resources and make sure that you learn these things too. So they're structured in a way where, you know, it's not like formal curriculum. It's not like you have to do one or the other. We've really tried to adapt this so that no matter the age of the kids, no matter what type of schooling situation they're in, it's just a very supplemental and easy way for the family to learn together. Like we have a, a cartoon series, for example, that is distributed by Angel Studios. They're the, the team behind The Chosen, The Sound of Freedom, which is in theaters right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we are in the second season of our cartoon. And the cartoon, it's just a funny, silly really entertaining kids cartoon with a bunch of uh, higher level humor for adults as well. So what you get is the whole family watching this cartoon where the parents are kind of connecting with some of these highbrow jokes. The kids are laughing at all the silliness and then they're learning some of these same concepts in that media. My goal with our team is to create a content empire where no matter the age of your kids, no matter how they like to learn, if they're more visual learners or they like reading better or whatever, no matter the no matter any of that, I want to make sure that we have resources for your family so that you can connect with these ideas, so that you can discuss them together. I think that's how we save our country. I think that's how we fix the many problems that we're dealing with is by having this like generational investment where we focus on the rising generation and try and fix these long-term systemic problems that we're having. It all stems from the ignorance that's being pumped out of the schools and these apathetic voters who don't understand our rights or any of these things. Uh, we've got to fix that, and that's why we're trying to strike at that root and uh, help the rising generation. Now, you talked about American history. Um, talk about it. That's very watered down, right, as it's taught in schools these days. Talk a little bit about you've done two American history books. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that and how you approach American history. So for those watching the video, oops, wrong side. You can see them up here uh, on your screen. Uh, the <laughs> second one just came out recently, and this all started from a research project. We bought, uh, gosh, about a dozen different social studies books that are used from, say, fourth to eighth grade. And we were trying to identify how are these books teaching about things like the Declaration of Independence and the Revolutionary War and the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the classical liberal heritage and tradition of the founding fathers. And so we read all these books. Uh, they're the more popular ones that I think 80 percent plus of students across the country were using because these are the, the big popular textbooks that control the market. We're reading through all these books and they are amazing if your goal is to cram kids' heads full of factoids that maybe one day they can win Jeopardy because they know all this random <laughs> minutia, right? Like if that's the goal, these books do an awesome job. But as I was reading this book, there was one quote that continued to come to mind. In fact, we put it on the back of uh, back cover of, of our books, and that is those who don't learn from the past are condemned to repeat it. And, and we do a horrible job at, at heeding the wisdom of that quote. Why? Because all of these books and all these schools, they do not teach kids to learn from the past. They simply teach kids about the past. It's a very passive approach to American history, much like walking kids through an American history museum. Oh, look at the uniforms they used to wear. Look at the drum they, they you know, played in the military band. Here's hardtack that they had to eat in Valley Forge. Oh, okay, kids, time for the cafeteria. Let's go to lunch. And it's this just very <laughs> cursory, superficial pass through history where, yes, kids are learning about the past, 
but they're not learning from it. They're not learning how to extract ideas and apply them to today. How did they deal with a, a similar issue 200, 300 years ago? And what can we learn from those debates and, and the, the you know, outcomes, uh, the consequences of those decisions? What can we learn from that to improve our world today? So our books, yes, they're history books. Yes, we, we talk about history. You can't teach history without sharing, you know, some of the, the basic events and things. But our books are heavily focused on the ideas, the philosophies, the values, the concepts, not only to say, here's what we're, uh, what was taught and discussed and believed, but then in every chapter we pause and we say, okay, hey, what did we just talk about? And what are some modern examples where we can see this same type of thing playing out? So we're helping kids start to learn from the past and apply it to the present day where they can see how, oh, I can, I can take a lesson from 1765 and I can actually apply that to what's happening in 2023. Interesting. Like schools don't do this at all. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, it's the whole point of history, not to memorize minutia. The point of history is to better understand who we are today and what direction we should go in the future. And, and so our books, I think, are one of the very, very, very few that even approach this goal of trying to help kids learn from the past and apply it to the present today. It's all it just uses storytelling, really trying to help kids. Yes, uh, learn some of the characters and the events from the past, but more importantly, try and understand who we are today and what direction America should go in the future. Well, and you've got a lot of resources. It's not just books anymore, right? You've got a lot of resources for families, a podcast uh, to the TV series, to the book series, as well as some educational emails that you send out. Why is it? Why do you think it's so important to have so many different options for families? I think we learn best through repetition. So it's not enough to read a Tuttle Twins book once and then put it on the shelf and forget it. Uh, we, we want these books to be engaging enough so that those kids are reading it multiple times. We've got a monthly magazine so that every month kids are getting, you know, exposure to kind of a liberty perspective on current events and what's going on in the world. We've got the podcast. We've got the emails trying to basically just reinforce these ideas so that the kids and their parents can see them in a different light. It's one thing to read a book about, let's say, inflation in the context of the Federal Reserve being created in 1913. It's another thing to surface a quote from the current Federal Reserve chairman or from President Biden or whoever, you know, blaming inflation on Russia, right? And then using that as another opportunity to learn from the past and say, okay, here's an example of someone claiming this. How can we think critically about this? Should we be skeptical about it? And what do you know from history that we could use to apply it to this circumstance today? So the repetition for us is key because if we really want uh, kids and their parents, frankly, to deepen their roots and really have a lot of like a firm foundation in these ideas, we have to touch them multiple times. We have to talk to them from different kind of angles and different events so that they can more fully understand these ideas so that when they're the training wheels are off and they're no longer reading our books or no longer you know a part of our network they have their own understanding that they've been exposed to maybe they've gone on to read the original books that our children's books are based on that's very common where parents would be like oh this this uh this you know Tuttle Twins and the Search for Atlas was super interesting and then they go read Atlas Shrugged um and, and kind of deepen their understanding of it so that, that's the whole goal uh it's this very kind of long-term effort but it requires constantly educating and, and repeating uh it's like why we go to church right you heard all these right. stories before but we go there to get like re-inculcated in the narrative and in the ideas so that we can apply them to whatever's happening right then in our lives that's the goal from a political and economic standpoint with the Tuttle twins is to be that reinforcing mechanism to teach the uh, the truth the doctrine if you will uh, with some regularity so that these kids get a, a healthy, strong foundation. Now we'll, we'll put the, uh, the website into, uh, the, into our podcast so that people can link to it. But if people want to learn more about the Tuttle twins, what you're working on, or if they just want to see, you know, your, your cute kids, I mean, you know, maybe there's lots of people who just want to go there and do that. Right. Connor, <laughs> um, where would they go? So tuttletwins.com. That's T U T T L E tuttletwins.com uh, is where you can find all the books for all the ages. We've got links to all the resources that I've talked about right there at the top. You can see, uh, the video with my, my kiddos, um, 
Uh, you, beware, you might watch it five times in a row because you'll just be <laughs> smacked with so much cuteness. Uh, but uh, uh, and, and then maybe one day I'll pay them a royalty. We'll see. They, they, they need to re, they need to renegotiate. But TuttleTwins.com, right. the, the books are on Amazon, but they're cheaper on TuttleTwins.com, and we give out a bunch of bundles. So, for example, if, when you buy the set of our children's books, you get our activity workbooks for free, where as they've read a book, they can go do some activities and, and projects and lessons. Uh, so we provide all that for free. We've got audio books, parent guides. Uh, it's just all over at TuttleTwins.com or on social media. You can find us on all the all the different social media uh, programs at TuttleTwins as well. Connor, thanks for joining us. Thanks, and thanks for undertaking this. I mean, I'm sure this has turned into a labor of love, but Man, I'm glad you had the vision to to come forward with this. Well, I appreciate being able to share with your uh, very like-minded audience. And for me, it's it's just always an invitation to parents and grandparents to make sure that we're investing in the education of our children, not assume that they're going to learn this through osmosis just because we believe it, right? But taking the time to actually talk to them about it. And so we're just here to help. If our resources can benefit you in having those conversations, we'd, we'd love to be a part of that uh, adventure. All right. Well, thank you, Connor. Appreciate you joining us. Listen, if if you're listening to this podcast and you're thinking, man, th- this is a great idea. I've never heard of the Tuttle Twins. Go go to the website, uh, learn more. And I would really encourage you to to do this. Go and learn learn along with your kids or your grandkids. And and uh, as as Connor said, that's really uh, an added benefit here. Sometimes people are just hearing this. You don't just have to be a kid to learn. You can learn, um, and and there's lots of opportunities here. You can you can get these books for you, for neighbors, for whoever else. So uh, it's really important for us uh, if we're going to change the narrative. And as as Connor said, if we're gonna if we're gonna save our country, we're gonna do it uh, through the talking to our kids and talking to that next generation about how precious liberty is and freedom is and our Bill of Rights and and all of those things and uh, capitalism. So. Take the time to go out and uh, and and learn, uh, you know, learn those principles. Uh, read these books and share it with everybody you know. Thanks for listening to American Potential. Thank you for listening to American Potential. You may listen to more stories from Americans working every day to expand freedom and opportunity in their communities by visiting AmericanPotential.com. 